Well, it's October 16th, the day after the horrific rain and wind that we had. The rain was predicted, but they didn't tell us anything about the wind that arrived here. Near hurricane force, I would call it. I've got things blown all over my property. and the, If you looked at my other little video here, the surf out at the seashore was incredible. Anyway, I've decided today to start doing the final harvest. I'm going to bring in the beets. Didn't, my beets didn't amount to too much. They're kind of small, but I'll cook them and freeze them. I've been enjoying them all fall. They're tasty even though they're small. And I think what I will do is put uh, a compilation of these last harvests together into one final video from the garden. So starting on the 16th and whenever I finish I will post this. This particular batch of, of beets are called Guard's Mark. See, they're not terribly big. They're the ones that, uh, when you slice them, they have that uh, bullseye ring, red and white circles inside. I found them very tasty. I had planned earlier to uh, do pickled beets, but I don't have enough beets this year to justify that. So. Cook them, peel them, and freeze them. And hope for the best, I guess. Well, there's my meager beet harvest. The uh, largest group off to the left, the very dark red ones, those are Deacon Dan, uh, an heirloom variety that I don't know, I don't think I grow them again. Um, a few of them reached a fairly good size, but. Uh, I don't know. I think I gotta look around for a beet that's more appropriate for the climate that we have here. They don't think Deacon Dan is it. In the center are golden beets, and they're not very large either, but they're very sweet and tasty. And then off to the right are the ones that I showed just a few minutes ago. That's the guard's mark, the one with the bullseye circles in the middle. Well, there's the beet harvest done. Get it in the house, finish cleaning them up, uh, get them cooked and frozen, I guess. That's my beet harvest all cleaned up and ready to cook. Not terribly big, but I suppose I'll get three or four small freezer containers out of it and enjoy them with meals sometime this winter. Give you a little close up of what I've been worried about happening with the uh, Savoy cabbage heads. They're starting to split because of all of the rain that we had. Just this one has, has split, but it's my largest cabbage. And it's not too bad of a split yet is the top few layers of leaves so I'm, I'm still leaving it alone. If it gets any worse I'll have to harvest it but without heavy rain it probably won't get a great deal worse but none of the smaller ones were affected like that so I assume they're still continuing to grow a bit. Also from what I have read in my book about making uh, sauerkraut the later you can leave them in the fall uh, for harvesting the uh, better sauerkraut it produces for for some reason, I don't understand why, but I want to leave them for another week or two if possible. Well, today's harvest is going to be carrots. I've only had four cells of carrots, and that should be 16 carrots per cell. But they're going to be various sizes because the earlier ones that came up have been left there and they're still you know, growing into good sized carrots. But where there were seeds that failed, I reseeded it two or three different times during the summer. So I'll get some good-sized ones along with some small ones. And I have been eating out of these for quite a while. They're delicious. So this isn't all of the carrots. It's just all that's left, I guess. Time to get them harvested and uh, cleaned up and in the freezer. or something and grew it around them. Well, that's, uh, that's what was in that one square. I'll finish harvesting them and show you the rest of them in a few minutes. 
Well, I'm quite pleased with that. That's pretty good for no more space, four little squares of carrots, and I've been eating out of them for quite a while. But I'd like to give you an idea of the, the difference in the size here. This is the largest one, and I keep losing the one that was the smallest one in here. I can see it when I stand up, but I can't see it when I'm down here. Anyway, there's, there's one that's even smaller than that in there somewhere. I think the size depended on uh, when the seed germinated. That one must have obviously germinated early in the spring, I guess. And that's probably, I don't know, seven, eight inches long, I guess. I had several that size that I've already eaten. I don't think I've had anything any bigger than that, but I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Next year plans are to hopefully get more. I want to uh, grow at least eight squares instead of four squares. Well, it's October 30th and a very cold day, windy. I'm on my way out to the garden to harvest my kale, but I had to show you my little chicken coop that arrived the other day and I just finished putting it together. I plan to get a half dozen banty hens next summer. And I had a feeling when I ordered this that it wouldn't be adequate, but anyway, it will do for the summer. I still got to build a, a coop before next winter because I wouldn't want to leave hens in this for the winter time. But it's a cute little thing, and I have I already have a plan of uh, taking it to a, an event that we have here in the summertime at the library called the Library Gala. I'll have that moved up there on a truck with a few banty hens in it for the kids to see. Anyway, off to the garden. Well, as I said, it's a very windy day, but I've got uh, four, I guess, kale plants. I want to get it harvested, and I'll take it in, chop it up, blanch it, and freeze it, and enjoy it this winter in soups and just as a vegetable. But it's very easy to harvest. called Toscano, Italian kale. It reminds me of the kale that you see growing in several European countries, very popular in soups over there. I've seen it in France and uh, Spain and Portugal. Now I'll show you all that I get as soon as I finish. Well, that's not a bad little harvest. I'm sure I'll get at least four or five Good sized packages to freeze out of that. Well, the only thing left now to harvest are the rutabagas, the Brussels sprouts, and the cabbage, all three of which improve with the uh, frost. So, but I still hope to get them in within the next week or so. Next week, I'd like to make the start making my sauerkraut. So I'll get those in sometime in the next few days, I guess. Well, it's November 3rd. Quite a bit of cloud still, but it's supposed to be sunny later on today. But today I guess I'm going to harvest everything else that's left in the garden. We've had several hard frosts, and now it's going so it's below zero at night. Uh, this morning, any place where there was standing water in a container or whatever had ice on the surface. And I have a digital Minimax thermometer says it was minus two last night, so I think that's probably enough. I don't want to uh, lose anything that I'm trying to get the frost to harden off for me. So I'm going to start with the uh, Brussels sprouts. stem of Brussels sprouts. I'll show you what they look like once I get them all harvested, but even down to these small ones they will be a, a usable sprout. I'll get them blanched and uh, in the uh, freezer sometime today, I guess. Well, there's the Brussels sprout harvest laid out on a chair here. I don't know. 
it's not bad. It's only five plants. That's all I had. And uh, by the weight of it, of course, with the stems, it's hard to tell. But I say I've got several pounds there anyway, two or three pounds of, of sprouts. Next on the agenda is my Savoy cabbage. This is my largest one that I've been showing off on various occasions here. As you can see, it has split on the top uh, from all the heavy rain that we had. It grew too fast and started to split open. But I'm not going to be saving it as a storage cabbage, so I don't think that will hurt things very much. I'll just trim off some of those outside leaves. Within the next few days, it's going to be finely sliced with the rest of them. and. Uh, hopefully in my pickle meister, turning it into sauerkraut. Well, that's the total cabbage harvest here. A couple of fairly decent sized ones. And the rest of them are really quite small. They're, they're firm, nice little heads, but they're very small. Grown in the same location. I don't understand why some get so big and others don't. But anyway, I think I have enough there to shred up and make uh, sauerkraut out of them. That was my goal, so that will do, I guess. Well, I have the same story with the rutabagas as I had with the uh, cabbage. Uh, some large ones, or at least decent sized ones, and a lot of smaller ones. I'll pull one or two to show you here, and then I'll show you the rest of them once I've got them all pulled. Of course, want wanting to show off, that, that is the largest one in the garden. a number that size and quite a few that are smaller. Well that's a rutabaga harvest. One or two fairly decent sized ones and a lot of these medium sized ones that I'm sure I'll be able to, to eat. And then a lot of these tiny little things. I'm curious to know whether you could just boil those without peeling them. Whether they're tender enough to eat peeling and all. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give that a try because they're so small. If you peeled them, there'd be nothing left. So that will be on the agenda for this evening. I guess. Well, there's the harvest finished for another year. All I have to do now is preserve it in several ways. I plan to freeze the uh, rutabaga and Brussels sprouts, and the cabbage is going to be made into sauerkraut. So that's the next on the agenda. Before I close off this rather lengthy little movie, I want to give you a look at uh, the cucumbers that I'm growing under lights in the house. Well, to start with, I'll just give you a look at how much this plant has grown. And maybe you catch a glimpse of some of the cucumbers as I scan down the length of the plant. I think the tray is about four foot long. It had outgrown the tray and was hanging out on the ground, the floor here, so I curled it around and, and uh, put it all in under the lights again. But I've been amazed at how well they're, they're doing. Right in there I have a cucumber that I'm going to harvest right now. They uh, certainly will grow larger, but uh, they do the same thing when they're out in the greenhouse. First they grow long and skinny, and then, uh, then they fatten out. But plan to have a salad later today. And I don't see any sense in going to a store and buying cucumbers when I have them growing in the house. But that's the one that I'm harvesting. There are numerous more, various sizes, all the way from tiny ones to... You can see it in well, That's basically what they look like when they, when they just get started, right after they bloom. But they're, they're growing very rapidly. I must say I'm pleased. Always been curious about whether this would work. So when these things go up to two dollars a piece this winter, I'll be able to pick my own in the house. Well, thank you for watching this long and probably boring video, but that's probably the last one for the season to do with growing things anyway.